this probably isn't the video that you guys are wanting to see. I have a few beginner watercolor videos coming up, but everything's just been so stressful lately with the storms causing blackouts where I live and I'm struggling to keep up with my uploading schedule. So <laughs> I'm giving myself a break and doing another no pressure painting video. I'll be using my watercolors and my gouache, but mostly my gouache. The watercolors I'm using are my Magello watercolors and the gouache I'm using are both my Mia gouache and my Holbein's. I'm also going to be painting on hot pressed watercolor paper and the reason I'm doing that is because this is going to be a detailed piece and I don't want any of that strong textures interrupting those tiny paint strokes that I'm going to be doing later on. So I'm using watercolors initially just so I can get that faded look, especially for the puddles and so I can set the lighting for the piece. I was in a really weird, uh, funky sort of mood when I started this. I was pretty sure I started this at 2 a.m. It was raining and for some reason I forgot what my watercolors looked like. So I started swatching all of them out. Even the watercolors that I wasn't planning on using for this piece. It was just, I don't know, it was just crazy. And I did all that before I remembered I was supposed to actually paint something. So yeah, anyway, I love seeing how watercolors react to each other and initially I was very nervous putting very light and very dark colors right next to each other, especially when they're both wet. But and if it was uh, watercolors that are very, that have a lot of movement on the paper, these colors would just bleed onto each other. But I kind of already know my Mijellos at this point and and I know that they don't move that much when they're on wet paper so I just decided to just let them do do their own thing and I think that's why it's important to get to know your watercolors when you start painting with them there's just a lot of different things that that make watercolors different by brands and it's not really just the quality of the paints it's also how they perform As for my goals for this piece, I want this to be as much about her as it is about her environment. I really love how moody the original photo was. It wasn't necessarily leaning towards happy or sad. It just looks like she was caught in the moment and that, that doesn't mean that the mood it sets isn't intense at all. I just think that it's a very emotional photo even though it's not necessarily happy or sad. It's just something in between that's also as intense. It's, it's really weird the way that the photo feels is kind of how I felt while I was painting this. I think a part of it is the fact that when you're painting something in some ways you're always affected by what you're painting or drawing. But this time it's also because of the rains we've been getting lately. I have a love-hate relationship with the rain right now. It used to make me so happy before and I always loved the smell and the sound of the rain. Especially on our tin roof when it's extra loud and crisp. But over the past few years, so I've started to associate rain with destruction. There's just been lots of flood that's been affecting a lot of people over the past couple of years that I don't know, I just can't relax around rain anymore. It makes me worry too much. I hope I didn't bring the mood down for everyone. So let's just talk about the actual painting. I really liked using my silver black velvet brush for this one, especially for the puddles. I like the effect of the, the pointed strokes it can do, but it still is able to cover bigger areas when I need it to, so, so it's very versatile in that way and I love it for that. Well, I really love how she's just a part of the scene, even though she's front and center and she's looking right at us, she's not necessarily standing out. Aside from the literal sense, 
so i wanted to maintain that by using the same colors on her that i'm using for the background so i ended up choosing the wrong colors for the branches on the upper right corner um so the dark bluish green that i chose was much more vibrant than i ended up going for for the piece initially those colors were what i wanted for the whole thing but i ended up going with a much more muted sort of blue so i did end up covering that area later on but this part just was just really therapeutic for me i wasn't even thinking that much when i painted this i was really just enjoying myself while i was painting that area So even with their skin, I'm using blue and yellow with only the slightest amount of red to it. On its own, this combination, I feel like if she was separate from her background, those colors would look odd. But for this painting, it makes sense. It did still take me so long to finish doing her face just because even though I don't want her to stand out too much, I still want to get her expression just right. One thing I love about the Holbein gouache is that it's a lot more velvety and it stays very creamy for a long time. It may be the, the, the consistency of the paints or it, just the quality overall, but I can paint my brush in once and paint so much with what I have in my paintbrush. The paint just stretches out so much more and I got these very small 5 milliliter tubes for them so I thought I was gonna have to buy more very soon but these might actually last me quite a while I did order a big tube of the Talons white just in case because I know white is something I need often so yeah, the Holbein gouache when compared to the Mio gouache that's the one thing that I noticed the most with them so even with this piece, the colors that I used with the Mia gouache I wasn't able to use that much just because as soon as they dried it was very hard to get them to be a consistency that is enjoyable to work with but if you get them fresh out of their jelly things they're still very good gouache this is the whole line gouache are a better experience overall and those are just the differences that I've noticed as I'm working with them so I really like how her skirt turned out I was nervous about this turning out alright because the folds are, just, are set in a way that's very familiar to everyone. So if I got it wrong, it would be glaringly obvious. And ironically, it turned out to be one of the fastest areas I painted. It only took me a couple of layers to get that to look how I wanted it to look. And I think that was very lucky. So the thing about this background is that there's a lot of dark details in them. So even though I wanted this to be a very clear limited color palette, I couldn't just have it be the same dark colors I used on her because those areas are way too close to her and I don't want them to just blur onto each other. So I'm going with a warm brown now. But I did end up going over it late, later on with a cooler gray, so it's not just so it's not such an odd mix. The accent color, I have no idea if I'm using that word right, but the color that I want to break apart the two most dominant colors in the piece. For this one, my, the two dominant colors are yellow and blue, so the accent color that I'm using is red. So the red I was already planning on using, it's on the ribbon for her uniform and on her skin. So 
we see right now the traffic cone looks odd but it won't <laughs> but it won't when i add more red to the piece especially for the lighting for the very end I'm looking at the footage now and I'm noticing how I work all over the place. I wish my videos were more satisfying that I would work on one area and completely finish that before moving on to other parts of the painting. I've even tried that before and it's something that I always want to do but I'm never satisfied with how one area looks with when it's completely done. I really need to see how it looks like with everything else in the piece because I want to see if they all work together before I'm completely done with it. I think a part of it is because I used to, I'm used to i used to working with watercolors and with those I am forced to work on other areas while I wait for one to dry. And I still have to do that with gouache but gouache does dry a lot quicker than watercolors. That's why you see me working on that one indoor room behind her in sort of one sitting. Still, still in the end, I went over some of the parts just so it fits the overall picture better. But yeah, it's more possible with gouache than with watercolors. But I myself still have a hard time doing it. It's really fun to do the power lines all blurry towards the back and I'm keeping it this lighter sort of grey color to really give it this effect that it was fading out to the background and I really like how it ended up looking. So now as I'm doing the retouching for the background, I'm removing the dark brown that I used for the house behind her just to, to get it to be more of a similar effect with the pole so it's not just sticking out too much and so only the lighting will stand out from that area so now i'm adding orange areas for the lighting originally i was gonna add a more reddish orange but I ended up liking the cooler overall theme so much that I just kept it a lighter, more yellowish orange and I really like how those small things affected the overall piece. So this is how the whole thing looks like. This thing took me about 5 hours, the, lo the longest I've ever worked on a painting and that I can remember. So that is it for this video. I'm sorry it took so long you guys. Hopefully I can get my next one out on schedule. As long as the storms don't get too bad and they don't interrupt with the electricity. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again soon.